Hey everybody, in this video we're talking about the Andy Murray Marin Cilic semi-final match at the Australian Open. Before we talk about this match, let me briefly touch upon Murray's win over Rafael Nadal because not only was I very impressed with how Murray played, he played amazingly well, but some of the things he was doing in that match are going to have implications, are going to apply to this match as well. Now, Murray played with controlled aggression. He went after Rafa, he took it to him, but it was within the framework of Murray's game. All that variety that Murray uses, he was able to be a little bit more aggressive than he normally is, but not really try and hit shots that he's not used to hitting, that he's not capable of hitting. And, for example, Murray's always had a good return, but on his second serve opportunities, he really went after it a little bit more and tried to be in control of the point from that first shot, and that was very effective against Rafa. Murray also worked the ball around the court like you would expect him to, but when he got a, when he got a look at an attackable ball, he went after it. He flattened the ball out, and he was in control of a ton of points. He either won it outright there or would get a short ball from Nadal, and that leads into the last thing that Murray did real well, which was hit approach shots and follow the ball to the net. Against Rafa, he approached the net 64 to, 64% more than he did against John Isner. So when he had an opportunity to, to approach and end the point, he took it. So those three things, the return, being selectively aggressive off the ground, and then coming to net when he had a look, those were three ways that Murray was able to be aggressive within the framework of his very varied, very varied, I think that works, his, all the variety that Murray's already got in his game. So he was very effective. I was very impressed. Now, how does this stuff apply to today's, tonight's match? Well, I think there's one thing in particular that is going to be huge for Murray, but more importantly, Marin Silic. Silic has played, Chilich, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Chilich has played two five-setters, and before that he played a four-setter. He's got a ton of tennis under his belt. But I've got some numbers up here, so what exactly is all of this stuff? Well, I think this match is going to come down to Chilich's first serve percentage because this, these numbers here, this third round, fourth round, quarterfinal, these are the percentages that Chilich's opponent won against his serve. So when Chilich was serving, in the third round he faced Walrenka, and Walrenka won 31% of his return opportunities. That's first serve and second serve. It's both. Fourth round, this was Del Potro. Del po DP won 31% of his return points. And against Roddick, it was up to 38, which is a little surprising since Roddick's return is typically the weakest part of his game. Well, here we have Andy Murray. And here, third round, fourth round, and quarters, this was Sarah, Isner, and then you had Nadal. This is the percentage that Murray won when he was returning. And so this is Sarah's first serve and second serve. He won 49% of all return points. Against Isner, he won 42. That, that's amazing, by the way, considering Isner's serve is so good. And then against Nadal, he won 44. So these percentages are outstandingly good. And unsurprising, un, unsurprising in a sense because Murray's return is fantastic. But Silic is... <laughs> Chilich is battling. He's going four, five, and five with these percentages for his opponent when these are the percentages, again, that his opponent is winning when Chilich is serving. So if Murray pulls off, I mean, this was against Sarah's more of an inferior opponent than Isner or Nadal. So, but if, if Murray's able to replicate these win percentages when he is returning, then Chilich is going to get crushed. So what this means for Chilich, if you look at his first serve percentages, they're not particularly good. They're sub 60%. So Chilich, if he wants to have a shot at this match, needs to raise those percentages, get himself into the mid-60s, 65. Because Murray's going to win his fair share of points when he's returning on the first serve, but he's going to take you apart on the second serve. We saw that against Nadal. He was absolutely crushing some of those balls. And while Chilich is a little bit taller... Nadal obviously hits a ton of, with, with you know, a heavy kick serve, but Chilich on that second serve kicks it a lot as well. And at 6-6, the ball is going to get a little higher in the strike zone, but Murray was, didn't seem to have any problem with those second serve kicks. So you can expect Murray to, be re, to return real well against 
Chilich's second serve. So this match, in my view, is really going to come down largely to Chilich's first serve percentage. If he can get it up a little bit higher than he's been doing before, then he's going to be able to make this a more competitive match than it otherwise would be. And if he doesn't serve well, then it's lights out because Murray has been serving great on top of all the other things he's been doing well. He's been playing aggressively, like I said, within the framework of his game. He moves fantastic, and he's serving well. So he is really on point with his entire game. And if Nadal, for example, hadn't retired, Murray was going to win that in straight sets regardless. He really took it to him. I mean, again, it was really impressive. So I think this is going to be a four-set match, even if Chilich plays well. I expect Chilich to, to play pretty solid tennis. You don't know where the fitness is going to come in or whether Chilich is fatigued because he's played so much tennis. I think he's played close to 20 hours. But Murray is just firing on all cylinders. So I don't see Chilich winning this match. Again, I think it goes to four sets, but Murray's going to pull it out. Murray's playing great. I expect him to make it to the finals. Now, like we've been doing with other matches, we're going to give away some free stuff. And for this match, we're going to give away a $25 gift card courtesy of TennisExpress.com. So you got to predict the score of the match. So please rate this video, subscribe to our channel, and then post your prediction, the score prediction in the comments below. Whoever gets the closest is going to win that gift card. And you have up until when this match starts, so good luck. Want to know the secret to Roger Federer's forehand? Click the link in the description and sign up for our 100% free course.